Do you want more views? Well, here's a vertical video formula that I use to stop people from scrolling and watch till the end. I'm gonna deconstruct one of my Instagram reels that just hit 2 million views, shot by shot and sentence by sentence. So first you're gonna to wanna to open a notepad and number it one through 10. Typically a short vertical video is 60 seconds and that's roughly about 10 to 12 sentences long. Those first two to three sentences are gonna be your hook. Watch any viral cooking video from any creator with millions of followers and you will quickly notice that they all start their video with two to three sentences telling you exactly what they're going to make and then describe how it tastes or something that's amazing about the dish that's going to make you want to create it yourself. Here's the first sentence of the video. Hey yo, these thighs don't lie. So the very first shot of the video is of a chicken thigh that does not lie. And I hold it up to the lens of the camera. And you'll also notice that there's a slight zoom as well. And it adds just a little bit more motion to the shot to draw the viewer in. The first sentence and shot are two seconds long. The goal of this shot is to stop the thumb of the person watching from swiping to the next video. The very next sentence is, marinated in coconut cream with fish sauce, these chicken thighs are packed with umami. So this next sentence is four seconds long. And the goal of this part here is to really drive that hook in. I'm describing the dish a little and I'm giving you an idea of the flavors that you're gonna taste when you make it and eat it. There are four one second shots that play over this one sentence. Two of them are of the dish being garnished and I add another slight zoom as I sprinkle toppings onto the dish. These two shots are also quickly telling the viewer what they might taste or experience when they eat the dish. Fresh cilantro and chilies would be a bright and spicy contrast to what looks like a savory chicken. They might also notice that it's cooked on a single sheet pan which makes me think that it might be quick and easy to make. And also, what's under that chicken? Hmm, I wanna know. The next two shots are of me eating the dish and then my reaction to the bite. Now, these eating shots are not necessary if you don't wanna show yourself on camera, but I do this more of like a branding thing for me. I show my face in my videos so that people know that they're my videos. Faceless videos can be anyone, so there isn't really going to be any connection made with you or your brand and the viewer if they saw a bunch of your videos over time. And because my face is in my videos, they might see me pop up on their feed a bunch and then recognize my face. And then after a while, they decide to follow or subscribe. Plus, at least if my video was stolen and reposted somewhere else online, it's still me, my face, and my brand that's showing up on the internet. Another shot sequence of this hook section of the video could be of the recipe being plated, or are you showing a nice close up of a perfect bite? Whatever you take away from this, just make sure that those first two to four seconds of the video are some sort of food porn style shot of the dish. Once you've hooked the viewer in, you need to go immediately right into the recipe. No long winded stories about shit. Just dive right into the process of making the dish. My very next run on sentence is In a bowl, combine an entire can of maikai organic coconut cream with one inch of minced ginger, four cloves of minced garlic, half a red chili, the zest and juice of two whole limes, a half cup of fish sauce, half cup of brown sugar, some olive oil, fresh cracked pepper, and give it some whiskey business. For this part of the video, just start putting everything in the bowl or the pan. Don't waste any time with shots of you cutting onions or prepping the ingredients. Have all of that prepped, measured, and in its own container and just throw it in the bowl. You only need to show something being prepped if it's some sort of special technique or something that's unique about the way that you prepped it for this specific dish. Everyone knows or can figure out how to mince garlic, ginger, or onions. So just keep the video moving. This part of the video was a pretty large chunk of time and it was 18 seconds total with 14 shots that played out. What helps keep the viewer's attention for that long is that I'm constantly providing information because I'm listing out the ingredients to the marinade. I also changed up my camera angle for a few of these to switch up the shot so it doesn't feel repetitive, long, and boring. The next two sentences are, you can reserve about half a cup or more for sauce later. Add six to eight thighs to the marinade and then let these hang out in the fridge till you get hungry. So nothing too crazy about this part. The first sentence was more of like a slight tip on how to save some marinade as a sauce before, the chick before you add the chicken and that way you don't have to worry about like chicken juices inside of the sauce. 
but the second sentence shows more of my own personality or my brand when I say to marinate it until you're hungry compared to what most recipes would say when they give you like a specific time that no one really follows anyways. This section was seven seconds long and it had six quick cutting shots with one camera angle change. This is also the halfway point in the video and it's a good time to do or say something that creates some more re-engagement with the viewer that's going to entertain them or make them wanna keep watching. I said a little funny, so my hope is that it perks their ears up and they're like, ooh, what do you say? And then they keep wanting to watch. The next sentence is, you wanna cut a cabbage into one inch thick slices and then remove the core if you don't wanna eat that. This was about five seconds long and four shots total. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm only showing this because I'm preparing this unique style of cut on this particular vegetable that's specific to this dish compared to just like simply mincing some onions or something, right? The next two sentences are, place them onto a pan and then hit both sides with some olive oil, pepper, and salt. Place your chicken on top of the cabbage and then you're gonna wanna hit that with some salt and pepper as well. This ran for 10 seconds total with eight shots in it. And when I say that it's eight shots, what I mean is that I'm showing maybe the same camera angle, but they're like jump cuts, right? Where the shot is basically jumping to another part of the clip to show the important information or the action of that recipe step. I prefer to just show one to two second clips of the major action or step of that recipe compared to taking that whole entire five minute clip of me putting all of the things into the pan and then just speeding it all up to play out in 10 seconds. To me, it's just more engaging and that sped up footage just screams like, super amateur hour to me, but that's just me. The next two sentences are, throw this into an oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 to 35 minutes, and the skin should be nice and crispy. This goes great with my coconut rice recipe. So this was another 10 seconds and five shots total. And this was the tail end of the video and I was kind of running out of time with this, you know, 60 second time limit of the edit. But my goal for this last part was two things. One was to give them a payoff. I wanted to give the viewer the info needed to actually cook the dish, but I also wanted to show it fully cooked and coming out of the oven. I didn't show me garnishing it again because I had these in the beginning. The next thing I wanted to show was the final plated dish and also mention a coconut rice recipe. I also filmed that recipe the same day and I was already planning on making a video for it, but I knew that if I mentioned it in this video, I would get people asking for it in the comments. And a ton of people did ask. And when I posted that video, it hit 190K itself. Same formula. Two major takeaways from that very last sentence. One is that I wanted to say or do something in my script or video that would make people watching leave a comment. This would also help boost your reach and views because it's telling the algorithm people are talking about this video and engaging with it. And two, a lot of people might have tried to cram that whole rice recipe into this video as well. But why? When you can get two videos from one shoot day. I got a whole other video that's breaking down how you can pull eight plus shorts or TikToks from one recipe. And I'll put that in the description. And this is a game changer if you're trying to pump out a ton of content, post consistently, and you don't wanna be filming seven days a week. So here's the key takeaways to get more views with this vertical video formula. The way the algorithm works is with retention. You want people to watch as much of your video as possible, ideally more than once. Make a strong hook in those first two to three sentences and then get right to the recipe. Do quicker cuts to keep your viewers engaged. One to three seconds per clip. YouTube shorts, reels, and TikToks give you about one minute, but you don't need to use it all. Make those videos as short as possible, but long enough to deliver your information without repeating yourself twice. Another thing to consider is adding captions. I've been doing this recently with my content, and it has been helping a lot with hooking in the viewer and retention. I'll show you how I do this in another video, but I encourage you to follow this exact formula for your next 10 vertical videos. And I swear to you, if you execute it well, you'll be getting more views than average and possibly have a couple videos go viral. Leave a comment below and let me know if you tried it and it works. Catch you in the next one. Aloha.